know that my dear friend Jeff Spell has gone to be with the Lord and uh, yesterday was a tough day and so we didn't make a video today. I'm going to cover two chapters of Ezekiel uh, to try to catch up where we should be. Uh, but I hope that you'll pray for Karen Spell and all of the family that uh, is going through this difficult time of adjustment. Um, all of the family knows where he is. He's not lost. Uh, and we'll be celebrating his life uh, Saturday at 2 o'clock. And I'll be a part of that by video. But I hope that you'll remember to pray for them in your prayers. Uh, it, it does remind us uh, the brevity of life and the suddenness of events. Uh, just a few weeks ago, Jeff was running his business uh, with full gusto and full enthusiasm. And uh, he and I would talk at least once a week, sometimes several times during the week. Uh, he was feeling well and doing well. And uh, now he's in heaven as a short number of weeks uh, before you uh, know it. It'll be our time. And uh, nobody knows our days or hours, but uh, God does. In any case, we're in Ezekiel in chapter 35 and 36. In chapter 35, we see a reminder of what Ezekiel told us in chapter 25. And that was that uh, he was going to bring, God was going to bring judgment on Edom. And that's a territory that we would know today as the nation of Jordan, uh, the area south of the Dead Sea and going over to the Gaza Strip. An area that had rejoiced in the troubles of the Babylonian captivity and Assyrian occupation uh, of Israel and uh, did it in such a way that God, out of all of the nations surrounding Israel, seems to have had a greater dislike for the way they reacted to Israel. And I want to remind you that what he said in chapter 25 about Edom and about the mountainous region and uh, what was going to happen to them. Uh, we saw it in chapter 25, verse 12, but I want you to see that he repeats a very similar kind of message in chapter 35, verse 9. So let's take a look at that. I will make an everlasting desolation, and your cities will not be inhabited. Then you will know that I am the Lord. And many believe that that prophecy was fulfilled in about 352 when... Uh, Alexander the Great came in and took over the entire region and uh, there was great desolation. It was uh, bloody battles and uh, many believe that this is exactly what uh, Ezekiel had seen and heard from the Lord as far as the judgment of Edom. In chapter 36 we find a uh, better picture of things to come, and that is the restoration of the land of, of Israel, uh, the people returning to the land, and we find uh, a bit of hope, a bit of promise for the nation of Israel and the reestablishment of the nation. The question here becomes one of long-term vision, short-term vision, or both. And I believe uh, that it's both. Uh, I believe that it's a short-term vision of the people returning to Israel uh, back during the uh, time that uh, the Assyrians had allowed them to return uh, some 50,000 uh, over a period of time. Uh, but I also believe that it looks all the way out to the return of uh, people to Israel in Jesus' time. And I believe that it has even a longer term uh, because of the wording that's found here and uh, tells about the time when the nation of Israel would come back uh, in large numbers, hundreds of thousands, uh, all the way out to 1948. And uh, so it's, uh, it's a beautiful vision. Now, understand we're talking about uh, 500 years before Christ. We're talking about uh, 1900 years after Christ's birth. 
and you say, well, you know, gee, that's a long time. Uh, how can you think that there's any implication of the returning of the nation uh, over that kind of time? We're, we're talking about uh, almost 2,000 years, and uh, that seems like a long time for a prophet to see out and uh, for him to have also seen the very short term, uh, relatively, a couple hundred years, and the uh, extremely long term of almost 2,000 years. But uh, let me remind you of a passage of Scripture in the New Testament that I think we sometimes forget uh, when we think about all of the different things that God said would happen and uh, prophecy. Let's take a look at the New Testament word from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But do not let this one fact escape your notice, beloved, that the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. Well, it's really hard for us, isn't it, to think out more than 80 or 90 years, uh, our lifetime, uh, and try to think about things that uh, might be hundreds of years away. And even if we think about two generations, our parents uh, and uh, then our generation, we're still talking far less than 200 years. And yet God says that a day is like a thousand years to him and a thousand years is like a day. Well, when did he say this? He said this as he was explaining when the Lord would come again, like a thief in the night. Uh, so I keep saying to you and I say to myself, we've got to be living in the end times. How long is that end times? Is it a day? Is it a thousand years? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it just seems like the stage is set. It seems like it's got to be coming quickly. But maybe not. Maybe it will be another thousand years. I sure doubt it. But nevertheless, God wants us to live like it's going to be now in our lifetime. And he wants us to be evangelizing with an urgency. Now, maybe that's why he wanted us to not be able to get a real close concept of time so that we wouldn't coast until it was ready for the end time or that we wouldn't get complacent because we didn't think the end time was coming for years and years and years to come. Nevertheless, I think it's very important for us to realize that when Ezekiel wrote these words, when Ezekiel was talking about the nation of Israel, he saw a few hundred years out, but he may have also seen out thousands of years. And so this prophecy of the nation of Israel flourishing uh, if you take a look at the next section of scripture, you'll see that he sees things that I don't think that Israel has seen until more recently. I don't think it was immediate. I don't think it was 200 years out. After all, if you were to look up in the encyclopedia, the history of Israel, you'll find that there was a great kingdom. It was divided into a north and a south around 900 years before Christ. You'll see a Babylonian invasion. You'll see the Persian uh, occupation. You see uh, Alexander the Great around 332. Uh, you see the Maccabean revolt about 174 B.C., uh, you see the Roman occupation during the time of Jesus after his birth um, uh, some years before and uh, for almost 300 years. Uh, and then you see Islamic control. You see the Christian um, crusaders. You see the Turkish occupation. You see the British occupation. And it wasn't until 1948 that the state of Israel was reestablished. Is it possible that Ezekiel saw all the way out to the Israeli state being reestablished after great heartache of the Holocaust and after nearly a million people returned to the land? 
Well, let's take a look at the scripture. You have to answer that question for yourself. Uh, what did the scripture point to? I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. The nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God. Then I will prove myself holy among you in their sight. For I will take you from the nations and gather you from all of the lands and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and will, you will be clean. I will cleanse you from your filthiness and from your idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will be careful to observe my ordinances. You will live in the land that I gave to your forefathers so that you will be my people and I will be your God. Well, we certainly know that the people started to return to the land uh, way back in 500 uh, before Christ. Uh, the fact that Jesus Christ came and then left us the Holy Spirit uh, to dwell in our hearts and where his laws would be written on our hearts uh, takes us to after Christ's birth and into the uh, time of God's working in the church. And we see that it's continuing. Has it completely been fulfilled? Uh, you'll have to decide that for yourself. But certainly we see that the prophets saw more than just the return from Babylonian captivity. Uh, he may not have understood what he saw, and he may not have understood what was going to happen. And I guess we don't know for certain either how far out he really did see and how far God intended for us to see. But we do know this, that through Jesus Christ, turning from our sins and receiving him as our Savior, we can have a cleansing a cleansing of our hearts where his word is written on our hearts. We turn from sin and self and we turn to him alone for our salvation and eternal life. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a wonderful day.